Hi guys, this is Mick again from Cyphertown.com and we're going to be talking a little bit more tonight about the Alberti Cypher. Now this uh, version of the Alberti Cypher uh, is being produced by Creative Craft House. It's a cool little company in Florida that makes a variety of uh, really interesting games and products and also wooden cypher devices and they like making historical products too and so this is one of their newest products um, it is uh, a product that has not existed for more than 500 years uh, it's a very unique and still powerful cipher it's the first polyalphabetic cipher using dissimilar alphabets and some people even call Leon Al Baptista Alberti the father of modern cryptography so we have a very nice product which we're going to be using here and you can purchase this if you're interested via the link in the description below. Uh, we're going to be using method one. Now in another video I talk about method two which is a more advanced and secure version but Alberti first talked about this method one which uh, he suggested using um, this method is not as secure but in the time in which he lived it was probably plenty secure for most communications okay so to get started we need to uh, first uh, cover a couple of things for its use in English because this was designed for use in Latin uh, Alberti left off six letters on the outer wheel uh, three are simply not used in Latin the J the U and the W and then he also left out the H the K and the Y, which he felt really weren't needed and there were other ways you could do things, and indeed you can. So I'm going to show you the workarounds real quick before we get started. So let me just put this up piece of felt on the side along with the disc and let's just go over our digress really quickly, okay? So with digress we have um, the numbers, well we have the letter, the missing letter is H, J, K, U, W, and Y. As I mentioned, for H, we're going to use FF. If we need to use it. For J, we are going to use II. For K, we are going to use QQ. For U, we're going to use VV. For W, we're going to use XX. And for Y, we're going to use ZZ. Okay? So those are the digraphs that we're going to employ as we need them. And with our example now, we're going to go with that old computer example when you learn a computer language, which is hello world. And as you can see, we have an H and we have a W, so we're going to simply rewrite this F F E L L O and then X X O R L D. And it's still pretty easy to read there. You can kind of see the H in there. Now, Alberti said that uh, you should start off your cipher with the key letter in a capital, and he's using upper and lowercase letters when he's doing this. So we're going to use an S because we're going to put our pointer under the S. And Alberti liked to have a K be his pointer. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm a little distracted here all of a sudden because I realize I want that S further over on the right. So just let me go ahead and correct that. I'll just stick it over on the right a little bit more. So we're going to end up rewriting this a couple of times. But I'll put my S there, okay? And uh, I'm also going to go ahead and have another shift. And that's going to be between these two X's. That's going to be a D, okay, which is going to go in there, okay? So this is basically what we're going to encode, and uh, I, c I could also, you know, just add these numbers up top here, but we'll we'll just have them already in place here as we go along with our encryption. Okay. So what we do is we go back to our cipher here. We simply set up the K on the S. Okay. This uh, device is very precise, so it's really amazing what they can do there at Creative Craft House with their super powerful, super accurate lasers. So as you can see here, it's, everything's perfectly lined up, which is really neat. 
And so we can just go ahead now with the encryption of this FFELOWX. All right. So FF is going to become QQ. And I'm going to write lower case because this cryptogram uses upper and lower case. And we use an M for E. And then we need two L's, which is going to be FF. And then we need an O, which is an A. And then we need an X. Don't forget the X over there, which is a P. Okay. And then we have to do something different here because now we have this D. So what we have to do is find our happy little K here. Okay, sitting under the S. And now we have to move him to D. So now he goes on his journey all the way around to Mr. D. Now he's under the D. And we have essentially a new arrangement of the inner disk relative to the outer disk. Okay. So now the X is no longer going to be a P like it was before. If we come back to the X, you can see now it's an I. And now we go for the O. And what is the O? The O is the ampersand. Let's see if I can do a good ampersand. Well, not that great, but it'll have to do. And then the R, which is an S. The L, which is a T. And the D, which is a... Okay, so there we have it, and we can write it out again here a little bit neater. It will be a capital S, and then Q, Q, M, F, F, A, P, D, capital D, I, and ampersand, S, T, K. So there we have um, the example that's also in the instructions. And all you need to solve this is to know that K starts under S and then is shifted to D. You don't even have to know that K starts under S because anytime you see a capital, that's what it's denoting. So you really only need to know that you're using a K. So that would be the only thing that you and your receiver would have to agree on to get this. Now you can make this more secure keeping with this method by having a chart where you transpose these such as or reinterpret these such as S does not equal S perhaps S equals G and D does not equal D it actually equals T. So uh, this S would tell a decoder to not really go to S, but go to a different letter, same for the D. So that would help secure things. But as it is, you do need the uh, Birdie cipher or you need a computer program designed to solve the Alberti cipher to go ahead and, and solve your cryptogram. Um, they're kind of unique if you give this to any type of cryptanalysis type person, they will be like, ah, oh, Alberti cipher, because they will see the ampersand. And also, if you have a lot of letters, they will note that the J, the U, and the W are missing. Okay? So, um, this is a fun method you can use that maybe you want to share something with a limited audience, or maybe you want to share some information with people that you feel that, uh, you know, will only be able to know what you're talking about if they go ahead and get an Alberti cipher from Creative Craft House, which they certainly could do. <laughs> so uh, this is a uh, fun uh, little device, uh, and it is capable of some really powerful stuff. Uh, if you're interested in uh, using it with a, a more uh, revved up and uh, intellectual approach, you can go ahead with method two. And uh, I think you'll find that uh, creates some uh, really secure ciphers for you. Okay, so thanks for watching. And please come down and visit ciphertown.com 
The link is in the description below. Uh, we have a forum there, and uh, if you're interested in this type of thing, please go ahead and uh, join the forum so that uh, we can talk about these things, and maybe you've got some ideas to share as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.